Hey X-Fans, I'm your expert Jake Wallace and welcome to X-Men Expertise, a new show where I'll be talking about all things X-Men. Comics, TV, movies, games, collectibles. If the X-Men are there, I'm gonna talk about it. And today we kick things off with one of the most famous and beloved pieces of media in X history. The opening titles to X-Men the Animated Series. Now, if you're like me, the mere mention of X-Men the Animated Series triggers a chorus of da -na 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 in your head. So how did the theme song come to be? The song was conceived and produced in-house at Saban Entertainment, and allegedly there were at least 20 versions before they were able to land on one everyone liked. The theme was written by Ron Wasserman at Saban, who just a year later would compose another famous 90s theme song, for Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Go, go Power Rangers. Wasserman also credits Ron Cannon for coming up with the bass line, which I assume means he wrote the bum 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 part. Continuously trying to beef the song up even more, Wasserman guesses there were about 120 instrumental tracks, all layered on top of each other on the finished product. It sounds like a lot of work, but I think we can all agree that it was absolutely worth it. So that's how we got the theme song, but what about the animation itself? Did you know there was originally a very different opening planned? What? I know, right? Originally, the entire thing was a fast-paced action piece about mutants being hunted, conceived by designer Larry Houston. They even went so far as to storyboard the whole thing. It opened on a wanted Dead or Alive poster featuring the main cast of X-Men, and then quickly jumped into shots of individual characters being hunted, seemingly by government forces. Next, we would have seen the X-Men facing off with the Sentinels and Magneto. From there, they had the X-Men running across the screen while the X-Men logo flashed by. This piece still remains in the final version we know and love today. After this, we would have seen teases of many of the team's greatest villains, including Sabretooth, Apocalypse, Mojo, Juggernaut, and Mr. Sinister. The intro would have closed with the X-Men flying towards the screen in the Blackbird, ending with the classic X-Men logo. So what happened? Well, it seems that Fox Kids president Margaret Lesh felt that the intro as planned failed to do one key thing. Introduce kids to the X-Men. Identification error. It was decided to go back and create a new beginning and ending for the titles while keeping the best action set pieces from the original storyboards in the middle. This was bookended by a new intro featuring an individual hero shot of each of the main characters next to a title card of their name, properly introducing them to the show's young audience. Beast and Wolverine already had official logos from the comics, but for the rest of the characters, it was up to designer Larry Houston to create a custom logo. The new ending featured our now established team of X-Men running towards Magneto, and a group of villains who would appear throughout the first season of the show. But wait, we need to talk about something. If you were an eagle-eyed child like me, you wondered why two of the villains appeared to be Warpath and a pink guy with a bulbous head and a green jumpsuit? But Warpath isn't a bad guy, and the pink guy isn't anybody! Well, it turns out the tight deadline to finish the opening sequence is to blame for this weird mix-up of characters. Most of the series' villains hadn't yet been designed when the opening titles were being created, which meant there weren't enough of them to populate the villains' lineup. However, Thunderbird was originally intended to be used in the series instead of Morph, so they already had a design on hand for him. He was quickly redone with longer hair to transform him into his brother Warpath. Now, the pink guy? That's more complicated. For years, it was assumed that someone just quickly whipped up a simple drawing of a new character who looked physically mutated. That is, until last year when it was confirmed that the character is actually a little-known Hulk villain named Gremlin. 
Before making this video, I had never even heard of this character, much less read any comics he appears in, so I was shocked to find out he made the cut over so many famous X-Men villains. I asked showrunner Eric Leewald if he could shed any more light on the subject, and he told me this. Larry and I still have no clue why Gremlin is there. Best guess is he fits the composition and varies the color palette. Well, we may never know for sure who made the decision to include Gremlin, but one thing is certain, this weird little pink eye will now live on in X-Fans hearts forever. Still, it's a shame the show was never able to go back and replace these two characters with actual villains from the series. Let me know in the comments which other villains from the show you would have loved to see in the lineup instead of Warpath and Gremlin. Personally, I'd pick Mr. Sinister and Lady Deathstrike. They're two of my favorite ex-villains and they both have fantastic appearances in the show after the first season. My name is Sinister. Mr. Sinister. All of this left me wondering what the people who were actually involved in the show thought of the updated intro. I asked Eric Leewald for his thoughts, and this is what he had to say. I never saw the first set of storyboards before Larry Houston and Will Minio had adjusted them, but I agree with Will and Margaret Lesh. We need all the character identification time spent in the new version. Also, the sense of the X-Men being hunted and Children of the Atom were accurate, but their emphasis was just slightly off the mark for the first season we were writing. Thanks for sharing your thoughts, Eric. X-Fans, be sure to check out Eric's two recently released books about the making of X-Men the Animated Series. The first is previously on X-Men, and the second is the coffee table book The Art and Making of X-Men the Animated Series by Eric and his wife Julia, who was also instrumental in the making of the series. Now, if you're a fan of the animated series, I cannot recommend these books enough especially the art and making of, which is packed to the gills with never-before-seen concept and production artwork. You can find links to both books in the video description below. I hope you enjoyed my first episode. You can follow the show on Instagram and Twitter at X-Men Expertise, and you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Minus the Snake. And if you're able to support the show, please consider donating on Patreon. You can find more info on the Patreon in the description below. That's all for today, X-Fans. Please hit those like and subscribe buttons because I've got more videos coming for you very soon.